if you want to stop using CPAP, just lose some weight, is what this guy would say, Jeff. Now, Jeff knows nothing about sleep apnea because he has nothing inside his brain. He is, in fact, an airhead. And today we're going to be talking about why this myth is so important and why it's important to understand the correlation between weight gain and sleep apnea so we can treat ourselves better and have a better mindset around sleep apnea. Now, Jeff might think that the solution to getting rid of sleep apnea is just to lose weight, but I'm going to give you an example here. Say Jeff here is a healthy, fit individual, and I decide to have a little bit of experiment. I take a feather duster just like this, and every night I go to his house and I stand in the corner. I bring my watch and every 15 minutes I smack him in the face. This is going to cause him a lot of stress. And I check my watch again, I smack him in the face, and I smack him in the face. Well, Jeff, it is that, it is that time of the night again. Over time, he might eventually get stressed out. Year after year, day after day of me slapping him in the face might cause his body to go into stress when he thinks about sleep, might cause his subconscious body to go into stress. And what happens when we go into stress is our body produces cortisol and wants to keep as much fat as we can. Now this makes sense. Back in the day when we're in a cave, we feel stressed out because it starts snowing outside and all of our crops die. What happens? Well, if we don't take some fat in for the winter, then our entire tribe dies. And that part of human evolution is very important, but it's still ingrained in us today. So after about five years of getting slapped in the face with my feather duster, it is possible, very possible that Jeff here gains a few pounds. Who would have thought, right? And then, so he's gaining a few pounds. I said, you know what? I'm going to ramp it up every 10 minutes. I'm going to slap him in the face. Five years go by, he gains a few pounds. I'm going to ramp it up even more. Every five minutes, slap, 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 until Jeff gets so upset and so stressed out, he doesn't know what to do. This is what sleep apnea feels like for a lot of people. Now, the reason why there's such a strong myth and misconception with sleep apnea is because visually looking at it, it always looks like someone who has excess weight is going to have a higher chance of sleep apnea. And even this might happen to you because you might have sleep apnea your whole life and not really realize it. And then if you do gain a little bit of weight, it makes the sleep apnea worse, right? At that point, you start noticing your sleep apnea and you think, okay, I clearly gained weight first and now I'm noticing sleep apnea. But you didn't really notice the underlying very low tier sleep apnea, you know, that very mild sleep apnea at the beginning. You only noticed it when you gained weight after. And the reason why that's important is because a lot of people blame themselves for having sleep apnea or a lot of people feel like they're blamed by others for having sleep apnea for being overweight. There you go. I, yeah, I don't know why you're stressed out. I, it, it must be the weight gain. I, I can't think of any other reason. This is misconception that that person is lazy, they've gained weight, and now they have sleep apnea. Where in most cases, it's the other way around. Now, I do want to note that in some cases, for sure, the sleep apnea is only present if that individual is overweight, but that happens, according to most medical studies, about 10 to 20% of the time. So let's say 15% of the time, someone who is overweight, if they lost all of their weight, they would not have sleep apnea. And the rest of individuals would likely have some form of mild sleep apnea, no matter what. And because of that, there's three individuals that I kind of want to highlight when talking about sleep apnea in regards to weight. The first one is the person with sleep apnea, they get it first. They were born and developed in such a way that no matter what, they're going to have sleep apnea. This person has a high likelihood of gaining weight because in our example with the slapping Jeff, when you can't sleep properly, you have a high chance of gaining weight. Um, not only because you're tired throughout the day, you're too tired to uh, leave the house, you're too tired to hit the gym because you're not getting good sleep, but also just physiologically with the hormones that our body creates, there's a very distinct correlation with sleep and weight gain. And it's very likely that someone who is not overweight, who has sleep apnea, will gain weight just because of the physiological effects that are going on in their body by not getting proper sleep. Okay, the next person in my example is someone who has sleep apnea, the sleep apnea made them gain weight, and then the weight made them have worse sleep apnea. So because of the weight on the chest, on the neck, around the throat, for most people, they're gonna see that if they do gain weight with sleep apnea, the weight is gonna make sleep apnea much more severe. This is why there's such a big correlation between uh, people thinking that you get overweight first and then you have sleep apnea. 
because you might be mildly snoring a little bit that doesn't disturb your partner. Over time, 10, 15 years, right? You gain weight because your body physiologically is holding on to fat. Also, you're tired throughout the day. You can't exercise. You have no motivation to eat healthy, stuff like that, right? Eventually, you gain that weight. When you gain that weight, you start snoring way louder. Is you, you start moving around and that's when your partner says to you, I think you gained too much weight because now you're snoring more. So you see in that case, it's so easy to blame the weight gain first, simply because it is such a visual indicator of something being different, right? And any visual indicator that's more dramatic is gonna look like the cause. And any indicator that looks less dramatic is gonna look like the effect. That's naturally how we kind of perceive the world. The next type of person is the person who does not have sleep apnea, gains weight for whatever reason. It could be unhealthy habits or it could be other medical reasons they gain weight, and then they have sleep apnea. Now these are the people that are kind of part of that 10 to 15% that if they were to lose all of their weight, their sleep apnea would disappear. Okay, so if you just got on sleep apnea, you could be part of this segment and you might be able to remove the dependency on a CPAP machine, okay, and CPAP therapy, but this is probably one of the more rare cases where someone loses weight and they're able to totally get off CPAP. Now there's one more person that I kind of forgot and that's the person with sleep apnea that obviously never gains weight. Again, this is someone who either gets diagnosed early is able to use CPAP therapy, or for whatever physiological reason, they don't need a lot of sleep, their body doesn't seem to care whatsoever, and they just don't gain weight. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> now, the reason why it's great to use a CPAP machine first is because it's gonna allow you to finally get the sleep that you need to have the motivation to change your life for the better and possibly lose weight um, so you can reduce the pressure of your CPAP machine. So some people might say, oh, just lose weight first and then we can put you on some CPAP. That's not gonna work. That's not gonna work because the reason why a majority of people have gained a little bit of excess weight in the first place is because they had sleep apnea in the first place. So if the original issue is diagnosed, the sleep apnea, we have a much better chance of getting rid of and helping with those side effects. I, I know it sounds crazy, but I think Possibly. You might uh, have a healthier lifestyle if I were to leave you alone for a while. I'm gonna head out. So what should be the goal of CPAP therapy? Well, the goal should be first, number one, to tackle your sleep apnea. Get yourself in a place where you have a good sleep, which is going to create a positive feedback loop, having more sleep, having more energy throughout the day, being able to focus throughout the day, being able to maybe exercise throughout the day. That is the goal of curing the sleep apnea first. The second thing, of course, is promoting a healthier lifestyle. Once you have a bit better sleep, you might be able to you know, do things, like I said, like exercise, diet, focus, um, and kind of adopt more of a healthier lifestyle. Now, for a lot of sleep apnea patients, the way that they've been living for the past 5, 10, 15, 20 years might be drastically different than the life they could have been living because they haven't had a good night's sleep in so long that just a little bit of daily activity seems quite daunting. But what these patients realize after CPAP therapy is that they have a lot more energy throughout the day, they feel a lot more better, and what previously was their normal is kind of tossed out the window and now they have a new normal, now they have a new focus and motivation to do things like adopt a healthier lifestyle. Now the third phase is kind of an unknown goal. I know that's not very satisfying, but it's the truth. You could be part of that 10-15% of patients that is able to get rid of CPAP altogether. Chances are though, you're going to be part of that 80-90% to 90 group that will continually need to use CPAP therapy. That being said, however, losing weight will make your CPAP therapy a lot nicer. In most cases, that means you can reduce the amount of pressure coming from your CPAP machine. Lower pressures are definitely a lot more comfortable than higher pressures. So that's gonna be a lot more comfortable for you. Because you can use a lower pressure, you have a wider selection of masks. So if you're used to having an 18, 20 pressure, you might notice that only one or two masks work for you and the rest just leak. But if you can decrease that pressure because you've lost weight and you need less pressure, then you can use a wider variety of masks, which might be more comfortable. In addition to that, you'll probably have less dry eyes, less dry mouth because of the lower pressure, and you'll be able to use maybe more aggressive EPR settings. So people at a high pressure might only be able to use an EPR of like one or two, but if you have more mild sleep apnea, 
then you kind of have a little more flexibility on your pressures, on your EPR, on your masks, and so on and so forth. So no matter what, trying to lose some weight definitely is beneficial, but might not allow you to get rid of CPAP entirely. I hope this video helped clarify the correlation between weight gain and sleep apnea. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please tell us your comments below. We want to hear the success stories in the comments, so leave a comment and please subscribe, ask some questions. And yeah, we're here for you at the CPAPstore.ca. So come on and check us out. And uh, yeah, that's it. Take care.